Whenever you find yourself in a situation whereby you have an experiment or you have a trial and those experiment or trial actually have two outcomes and the same experiment or trial was performed at least two times then you can actually use the concept of the binomial distribution to actually model this experiment or this trial of this situation of yours hi and welcome to another youtube video and in today's video we are going to be talking about the concept of the binomial probability distribution we're going to be talking about the mathematical function also known as a pmf that help us to calculate the probability of success attached to every trial of a binomial experiment or a binomial distribution and to top it off we are going to be using microsoft excel to actually model a binomial distribution so without further ado let's get into the video and start learning properly So this is the basics right here. Random variables actually make up probability distributions and I've actually talked about more on the concept of random variables. I will be linking that video in the top right corner so you can just go check that out. Whenever binomial random variables actually come together, they form what we call a binomial probability distribution. Now this is a mathematical notation that we use to represent a binomial distribution. We have x and then we have this approximate sign, then we have bi, in bracket we have n and we have comma p. It simply states that x is a random variable which is approximated by the binomial distribution. Now the binomial distribution is dependent on two details and that is n which is the number of times that the experiment was performed or we can say the number of trials and p right here is the probability of success attached to each of the trial. One of the typical example of a binomial distribution is when uh, a soccer player or a football player wants to take a penalty. So when he puts the ball down and is facing the keeper, the experiment right here is the fact that he wants to play the penalty kick and there are actually two outcomes to this experiment. It's either he scores the penalty kick or he does not score the penalty kick. Now there is a chance that he might score and there is also a chance that he might not score. So if he decides to take like let's say like 10 penalties at a goal like 1, 2, 3 down to 10 and uh, if this experiment or this trial of ours actually follows the rule of a binomial distribution then we can start asking the question that if it plays the penalty like 10 times and it has this let's say 50% chance of scoring so what is the chance that is going to be scoring exactly 3 penalties what is the chance that is going to be scoring at most five penalties what is the chance that is going to be scoring at least two penalties so these are questions that we can actually answer whenever our experiment or the situation we are can be modeled by a binomial distribution for a distribution to be modeled with a binomial distribution it must actually obey some certain rule and the first rule is that the experiment or the trial must have just two outcome most time success and failure. Secondly, the experiment must be performed at least two times, meaning n must start from two. The third one is that each of the events that makes up the experiment must be independent on each other. That is, the chance that the first trial is going to occur does not in any way affect the chance of the second trial occurring. The second does not affect the third, the third does not affect the fourth, and so on. And the fourth condition is that the probability of success for a binomial experiment or a binomial distribution must be constant must be the same all true so if the first trial the chance of him scoring the penalty is let's say 50 percent then for the second trial the chance must be 50 the third must be 50 the fourth must be 50 down to the last kick and once the experiments satisfy all of those conditions then we can actually use the concepts of the binomial distribution to model the situation. So once we have our binomial distribution set and all of the conditions are actually being satisfied, then there is actually a mathematical function that can help us to calculate the probability of
defines the binomial distribution so he's going to be playing 12 penalty kicks in total and uh, the chance of him scoring the penalty kick is actually going to be close to 50 percent so that means that if there's a 50 percent chance that he's going to be scoring the penalty there is actually a 50 percent chance that he's not going to be scoring the penalty so the success he's going to be having will be starting from zero down to 12 so that means he can score zero so we can just come right here we have zero we can have one we can have two we can have three down to 12 so let's just fill this in all right so we just change it to fill the series so it's just this that we need all right so so the number of trials is actually 12 that is 12 penalties and it has a 50 percent chance of playing each penalty so that's going to be equals to uh 0 0.5 so we come here to insert the binomial distribution function. All we have to do is to press equality sign and a B I N O M. So it brings out the. So this is the first one we are using. All right. So you can see it has a number of success. We have trials. We have probability of success, and we have the cumulative. So let's start with the number of success first. So we are starting with zero. So we click here. We click on A two. You know, we press the comma. And then we can move to trials okay so the trials is the number of times that the penalty kick was played and that is 12 on cell c2 so we click on um comma again it asks us the probability of success so that is 0 0.5 and that's the cell right here so for the cumulative we click on comma rather okay for the cumulative if you want to talk about the cumulative you click on true which i will still work back to in the next few minutes but let's talk about false right now so we click on false and that's it okay all right excuse me i need to like work on something so first thing first i need to make sure that this formula remains the same all through the cell because uh in the mathematical context we're using the same formula all through to calculate probability of one two down to three so to do that i'll be using the absolute uh reference cell so i drop in the dollar sign i drop in the dollar sign right here and then enter so right here then i can drag this down so and this is actually the probabilities for each of the situations so the chance of ronaldo scoring zero penalties we have this scoring one penalty we have 0 0.002929 you know scoring two scoring three down to 12. so we can actually tell more story by trying to visualize this whole thing it makes sense that way and one of the best to do that is to use a scatter plot so this is it right here i can just you know select all of this insert and come to the scatter plot right here so this right here is actually the binomial distribution that defines the penalty that cristiano ronaldo is actually going to be you know playing if i change the value of n and p meaning i can change this to like 15 or 30 i can change it to like 0 0.7 or something it's going to change the values right here at the same time it's going to change the shape of the distribution so let's give it a try let's assume we change this to like let's say 20. let's say we have 20 and you see what happens okay it changes all of the values right here and uh, it has changed the shape of the distribution what if we change this to like let's say uh, 0 0.85 you see uh, it changes all of the values right here and it also changes the shape of the distribution so let's go back to what we have earlier on that is 12 and then uh, we also have this to be excuse me this to be 0 0.5 so let's just go back to what we had initially so let's now work on this but this time instead of putting false right here we actually want to get the cumulative probability so we can just come right here and replace this with true so this simply means that we want to get the cumulative probabilities that is we can ask questions like what is the chance that is going to be scoring at least three penalties at most four penalties you know at most five and details like that so we click on enter and then i can decide to drag all of those down and once i do that it gives me the cumulative distribution that defines this whole experiment and as you can see the highest value is one that is the sum of all the probabilities must be equals to one so the chance of him scoring at least uh five penalties is actually going to be equals to 0 0.3872073 probability of him scoring at least eight penalties is something around here so okay this is 10 this is 
9 this is 8 so probability of scoring at least 8 penalties is going to be close to 0 0.92700 you know it increases as we get to 12 and probability of scoring at least 12 penalties is going to be close to 1 so this is just the beauty of the binomial distribution with excel and this is how we can use excel to actually model a binomial distribution and even its cumulative distribution if you learned something new from this video and you actually really enjoyed this video i would really appreciate if you can give this video a thumbs up and also subscribe to this youtube channel do you think i missed something or you have a question for me please go down to the comment section and drop your questions i will be willing and be looking forward to answering them do you need to learn statistics for data analysis and data science from the basics i have a very perfect playlist for you that can actually help you out so you can just go check that out i'll be linking it right here thanks for making it to the end of this video and we'll see in the next one where i'll be using spss to model binomial distribution so bye for now